Uh, my name is Chris. I work at Drift Outfitters, manage the store as well. Um, you know, done a few things with you guys in the past, but today we're going to be tying uh, some boobies. Uh, and for those who aren't familiar with the pattern, they're very different than what we were just talking about, the steelhead urinims. Uh, they're a uh, still water fly predominantly. You can fish them in rivers and other places too, but they really are a still water trout fly by design. Um, and it's, it's more of a concept fly than it is an actual pattern. So it's um, like saying that you're going to tie, you know, a nymph, you can tie it in all different manner of ways and for different applications. Uh, but it's, it's something really fun to play around with. And it, uh, it works very well for solar trout, but it also works really well for bass. I fish a lot for that. Uh, we actually have had some good luck fishing it in rivers too, uh, though it's maybe not as much of a go-to there. So, um, change cameras here. I'll show you what it looks like. I've got like four or five different uh, variants that we'll go through. So this is what the fly looks like. You can see where the fly gets its name from, no further explanation needed. Um, and what's really cool about this fly, so the eyes are made of foam, uh, the foam, but it's like a closed cell foam, uh, fairly buoyant, uh, fairly soft and spongy. Um, so yeah, this is the raw material you can buy it like that. Or more commonly, you just buy a little pack of like pre-cut dowels that are dowel shaped and an inch or two long and you just cut them to your needs. And so the thing that makes this fly so deadly effective is that it ends up being buoyant or at least neutrally buoyant. And so that allows you to do a lot of things with it that you can't do with traditional flies. Um, still water fishing is really about targeting specific depths in a lake. Uh, and this applies to other species besides trout as well, but it's especially important for trout fishing in lakes is that fish tend to sort of stratify at different particular depths, you know, within just a, a couple feet of the water column, you might find most of the fish. So um, being able to keep a fly in that depth, you can imagine is very important. A lot of traditional flies, whether they're weighted or they're just uh, relying on the weight of the hook, they, uh, they don't stay in the zone as much as we'd like. So a booby uh, allows us to, uh, to more kind of precisely target those zones. On top of that, I almost think of a booby as more like uh, a modern muddler. So if you think of a muddler, You've got uh, a buoyant material in the head and deer hair and a stiff material in deer hair that pushes water. And so this is basically the same thing. You've got something that's going to deflect water and in that deflection, it'll cause vibration in the water. And this is a Hannah 260 in a size eight. So uh, it's a sort of short shank and input basically in a size eight. Um, about it. You can tie on a small screamer hook if you wanted to. Um, the thread, you can ask these just about anything, but something a little thicker is going to make it easier for you. So this is a this is a six aught I've got here in Adivas. It's a relatively heavy stuff, and the reason I want to use a heavy thread, for one, it's not a small hook, so it's pretty easy to work with. There's also only three materials in this whole fly, so you don't need to worry about those wraps getting really bulky on you. But that foam is pretty soft, and when you tie over it, you risk cutting into the foam if you use a really thin. So the thicker thread. Uh, thanks to the um, So we'll start with thread just up the eye. Turn it down. There's a few different ways of tying in these eyes. Um, there's no real wrong way of doing it. I'll show you one and we'll mix it up for the next fly so you get to see each. Um, yeah, so you can play around with it. Uh, this stuff has sort of a nice medium buoyancy to it. It's not you know, an easy buoyant, you can't sink it. Um, yeah, play around with whatever you've got. I've made this stuff out different. So, best way to center this stuff is to say, you want to get fairly even, put a wrap over the middle here. This is a technique from Dave Downey, he's a well known Scottish angler. Very, very good tire. And you can kind of see how it sits. I gotta be honest, I don't love that. So put another wrap on there. I'll just start winding, wrap down and do my hook. If you do, if you want to tie this in like you would a set of dumbbell, bead chain, or do like hooks wraps over it, it doesn't really work all that well. You find that uh, your initial uh, cross wrap will go on an angle. Uh, this way, it's, it's perfectly split right down the center. So, it doesn't take a whole lot of wraps. 
And then for the tail on the fly, I've tied it with different things. Uh, the original was actually with white rabbit. Uh, this one I've moved more of a white marabou. So you want to find yourself just a nice big plume of marabou here. And what you don't want to do, and this goes for any screamer in my book, but you don't want to take a pinch and tie it off the tail. That's how most of us for pots do it, find really buggers and things. But the problem with this, and it seems like a small thing, is this down. It's actually quite stiff. And it really doesn't let the feather move a whole lot in the water. To get the best potential, you really just want to use the finer barbs of the front. I just rip it up the side. So rip it up the side, big bump. I'm going to tie this tail in long. Minimum, because this is a short chain cook, minimum twice the length of the chain. Don't be worried about short hits. Don't be worried about fouling. Uh, it actually very rarely fouls, in my experience. Um, I think mostly in part because of the shingle that we're going to put on in front of us. Up to the body, we're going to do this stuff. Crazy bright electric yellow fritz. If you're not familiar with fritz, it's this stuff. Um, it's used for tying a fly called a blob, which we know tie later. Uh, but it, it's just a chenille. It's very dense, you'll see. Uh, it has a nice translucency to it as well, but it's very dense. So again, if this fly is built to push water and get noticed. I have it. And then what I'll do, I'll use a bit of super glue. Uh, super glue will melt this uh, eye material. But if you just get it on the bottom, I actually don't mind using super glue with materials that will melt from it. Um, because I don't, sometimes I find that it almost further solidifies them. If it melts, it means that it's um, almost going to create a bond with it when it solidifies again. Uh, this is a sunburst blob material, so it's a must, must have. So same thing, just strip off you know, a few fibers from the end there. And we'll just tie it in by the exposed pore. And again, I'll wrap it up. That is back. Similar to the uh, big, big log, I swear that blob has to be like the most dense object on earth to uh, soak the fingers and really, you know, Slick this back, pack it in there. Uh, so if I left it like that, that would be a blob. Color of eyes, up to you. I've got section wrap over. Again, it looks super weird. This, I think it was more of a um, fishing tool than a real fly on its own. This will take a lot of fish by itself, just again, it's pure attractive. And you can do all kinds of different stuff for the body. Pick your favorite nymph. For me, I'm going to tie a pheasant tail. Okay, so I've got pheasant tail here. I'm going to keep it fairly sparse. Go with like four fibers. And just tying a tail. I'll keep it, you know, kind of shank length or so. It doesn't have to be all that long for this. Just tying a length of that on the side. Wrap your pheasant tail backwards. And backwards is just uh, opposite direction of your thread. So I'm, I wrap this way with my thread, so I'm gonna wrap. So it makes sense <laughs> looking from it head, head on if you can see the direction of my finger there, wrapping back towards myself. The wire, I can just wrap the usual way. And the reason this is advantageous to wrap wire back is that uh, when you wrap backwards, you should then reverse the direction of your thread so that and that you're not actually taking attention off by wrapping. It's just a little neck hackle, a brown, similar to the body. And I'll just pull off some of those fibers at the very base. So, a little bit of working room at stem here. That's that one. I don't want to go heavy on this. A turn, maybe two. Put some booby eyes on it. So these are much smaller. This is a four millimeter eye now. See the difference. Even though it's just a couple millimeters difference, and it's a, a good bit smaller. This is sort of a light gray, or just a very small set. It's funny to see those eyes. They do kind of push that hackle back a little bit. So 
Same idea. A nice little set of eyes there. Just a very natural little wet fly. So this one, um, this is a vampire uh, booby. And this is probably my most fish with all the booby flies. So it's super simple again. These are all sort of competition style, guide style flies. But here. This is a black marabou plume. Um, again, it's going to rip off a nice big bump fabric inside there. Small clump here. Again, I'll just, I'm gonna tie this in about shank length here. This is a little bit of a longer shank hook. It's a 230, 2XL nymph hook essentially, on a size point. You could tie that on the other hook too, wouldn't be an issue. For the body on this, black UV micro polo Awesome material. And it's ever the vampire leech. We have a tutorial on our website. It's a uh, really, really great pattern. So uh, it, it's a pretty thin uh, core material here. All I'm going to do is I'm going to start wrapping it here. Edge dead wraps, just kind of covering the body. I don't need to make it super dense or full. The original fly, uh, people haven't seen it, it's just it's, uh, it's a merry tail. So I do on this one, I actually tie a wing. So this is the other style of that you'll see quite often. Kind of like a, another fly called a formant. Uh, so again, taking that nice long form right here, turn down the tips a little bit, a little bushier. I'm just gonna tie that in so it kind of matches up with the tail. And for the eyes on this, we're gonna go back. Uh, I'll do this in basically all colors of, um, of booby eyes. So I'll do same color body, uh, the black, but then I'll do orange eyes, pink eyes, chartreuse eyes, and black eyes. Then those eyes are just slightly beveled. It's looking good. I actually want that wing to be a little fuller still. So I'm gonna grab a little more there to that uh, buries itself in between those eyes. Now you see where the butt ends. That's a nice whole wing vampire booby. So yeah, put it around. And you could do that obviously in other colors. You could do any of these flies in other colors. Um, but I really like doing this one in black and then just changing the eye colors. Uh, Uh, this last one is my damselfly booby, or one of them. I tie a few different uh, kind of variants of this fly. I've gone back to the big hook. This is the size of uh, 260. So again, short shank, fairly heavy wire, size eight, big. Don't use, a, don't use crystal flash or anything like that. It's too stiff. If you have to, just regular flash, or even emit this if you don't have anything like it. But soft flash is key. And you want to take a pretty good chunk of this stuff. Probably eight or so fibers. I'm gonna put more marabou in here. It's still not enough for my liking. So take another good chunk of this stuff. This is sort of a light pale olive marabou that I've got here. Uh, a pale olive, a yellowish olive, Oops. which is actually take that same marabou just take a little inch off the side here. Cut off the little curly ends. I'm gonna use this as dubbing. Just kind of loosely dub it onto its bed. And then we're gonna tie in some eyes. Um, we'll do, I don't know what, I don't want to do this. I had some short loose ones out. I think I have yellow, I prefer to do I? So, nice soft yellow. You know the drill by now. Snip off a little yeah, half inch if section around the edges out. There are some guys who will take this to an extreme and they um, actually bake their booby eyes. Uh, that would fish really well as is, but there's another really cool little trick that I like to do that will perform some boobies, which is rubber legs. So we've got Awesome motion tail, we've got great vibration on the eyes. Legs, rubber legs give you good vibration and obviously good movement. Couple legs, now what I like to do right behind the eyes, I think is nice. This is some kind of golden olive seals fur. I like to go between those legs, kind of splay them out just a little bit. 
trying to kind of build up a thorax. I want like a bit of taper to this fly, so I want this a little bulkier than the rest of my body. Remember, damselflies swim, they're very active. They are um, actually predatory insects, but, um, but they do feed on smaller insects. So they're pretty active swimmers, uh, always on the move, uh, hunting stuff down. And it is absurd how fast you can fish this fly. So, so you're primarily fishing, like you fish these for panfish or trout? Yeah, you can do panfish too. Uh, they're really trout flies at the core. Uh, yeah. work, they do work very well for bass too. Uh, I fish these very frequently for bass and I love them. Yeah. Fair. Maybe, maybe not as much a super tiny cruncher for them. Maybe more yeah. like big streamer type stuff. But yeah. They'll, they'll how big, that. and how big, because it's almost like if you make it big enough, it's almost like a popper, right? Yeah. Yeah, it kind of is. Yeah. Just with yeah. the mobile materials on the back. Um, yeah. But yeah, yeah, like I say, you can almost really fish these like a popper. Like a popper. They're going along in the, the surface there. So totally. Cool. Yeah. There are some really cool eyes you can get to. Um, I didn't tie with them, obviously, but uh, these guys, they're um, called flues eyes. They're kind of pre shaped. They're giant, though. This is, a, is there eight mil? This is six mil. That's right. I've never actually bought the eights because they're ridiculous. But um, these pre molded eyes, they're a bit of a different material. They're kind of rubbery almost. Um, if you're going to tie bass flies with these, uh, this is the one to get in my mind. They're called flues eyes. We've got them at the shop. This is the six mil size. Uh, they do come a size bigger even if you want to use bass. They're really nice. And you're, Chris, you're generally fishing these on a sink line, I think you said, right? Generally, but uh, only because more often than not, you know, you take the entire water column into account when you're fishing. Sure trout and only one depth of that water column is on the surface, right? So um, yeah, generally we are fishing sinking lines just to find the fish. But, yeah. uh, they, they work yeah. well. but they will float on their own. It's not, I think you mentioned it was neutral, kind of neutrally buoyant. Or yeah, we'll so sink a that, little bit. Yeah, so that's the thing. I, some of these would be you know, more neutral buoyant, more, some of them would be uh, flat out buoyant. Um, but a lot of them, you know, just the, the materials getting waterlogged and the weight of the hook will eventually draw them down just slightly. Uh, so they may not be right on top for you. It depends right. on the size of eyes that you use, what size hook you use, if you tie them on a really heavy wire hook or not. Um, sure. so you, you can play with that and can't, you just can't for those things. Yeah. So yeah, Ian Troop, uh, December 1st is doing a stream with us. It's a ticketed event. So you gotta grab a ticket in advance, but it's going to be worth your while. Um, he's going to be diving into strictly that subject and that's going to be um, brand new info to a lot of folks. So that'll be really good. I've uh, uh, got some stuff going on for Black Friday. If you want to check out our website, there's some stuff there for you. Otherwise, if you have any questions or you know, need materials, we're always happy to help with the shop. Um, I am a, I should say, a pro at the Franklin Club as well, which I think you guys are familiar with through various channels. Um, so there may be possibility down the road if anyone wanted to like dive further into the stuff uh, where I would be able to, to offer some instruction on still water up there too if anyone ever had the, uh, the desire. Well, I'd really like to thank you for uh, flying through those flies. You're... <laughs> yeah, that's, that's what happens when I'm, uh, <laughs> I'm just left to myself. I can't go through that. <laughs> And uh, Chris is always available at Drift Outfitters. If you want more information, please uh, feel free to get hold of him. And once again, thanks again, Chris. Uh, much appreciated. Have a thanks, great Chris. Day. Okay. Awesome. Thank you.